33 years ago today, a gay man shocked the world at the Olympic Games and secured his place as the greatest diver in history. Hi there, I'm Bruce Tedder and you're watching Today in LGBT History. This is the story of Greg Louganis. His story is one of overcoming obstacles, no matter what fate might throw in your way. Even from birth, Greg had a pretty difficult life. He was born to teenage parents who put him up for adoption. Fortunately, he was adopted into the Luganis family in the suburbs of San Diego, California, but years later he would talk about how his adoptive father was abusive and an alcoholic. He suffered from dyslexia, though remained undiagnosed and therefore wasn't helped. He grew up feeling unwanted, stupid, and afraid of everything. But Greg's inner spirit wouldn't let him give up. He focused on his athletic skills, and when he was afraid of something, he forced himself to overcome it. When he was a kid, for example, he was afraid of snakes. It's a pretty common fear that most of us just live with, but he wasn't about to let a fear overcome him. He saved up his money and bought a boa constrictor. Yeah, a boa constrictor. One of these things. He forced himself to face his fear until he had conquered it. At the 1976 Olympics in Montreal, Greg represented the United States at just 16 years old. At the beginning of the games, he was suffering a toothache and had to go to the dentist. However, he didn't want to fail the drug test and not be able to compete, so he insisted that the dentist drill without any sort of pain medication. The very next, the very next day, he won, a, he won a silver medal. At the medal ceremony, the Italian diver who won gold looked down at him and said, in four years, you'll be where I am. And they probably would have been right, except in 1980, the Olympics was in Moscow and the United States boycotted, so he wasn't able to compete. But he didn't let that distract him. He practiced his skills, and whenever the Olympics came to Los Angeles in four years, he was ready to go. On August 8th, 1984, Greg competed in a springboard event. He completely destroyed his competition, scoring over 754 points. That's 100 points more than second place. A few days later, he would compete in a one meter platform where he won another gold medal, winning the highest score ever in the sport. Four years later, he would do it all again. Though Greg Louganis was a world-class athlete, his personal life wasn't that great at the time. While he was competing in LA, he was in an abusive relationship with his business manager. Six months before the 1988 Olympics, he found out that he had contracted HIV. Especially at that time, there was a severe stigma around HIV. If he had told the Olympic committee, he probably would have been prevented from competing. So Greg and his inner circle decided to keep his HIV status a secret. His coach, Ron O'Brien, would later say, we knew that the risk of his spreading the virus through an open cut was infinitesimal. And besides, how many times does a diver, much less Greg Luganus, get wounded? We thought it best to keep his condition to ourselves. But as luck would have it, Greg did hurt himself at the 1988 Olympics. Though it wasn't a serious injury, it did create a gash on his head. He bled into the pool, and the team doctor had to stitch him up. He later realized that the, do that the doctor wasn't wearing gloves. Fortunately, when Greg made his story public in 1995, everyone involved in the story was tested and tested negative. But that really highlights the stigma that exists around HIV, doesn't it? Even when I'm saying this, I have to actively prevent myself from falling into the HIV hysteria trap. Repeatedly, doctors will tell us that mere skin contact or contact on your skin with the bodily fluid of an infected person isn't enough to become infected yourself. It's not just that it's highly unlikely, there's never been a single case. Our skin does what it's designed to do. It protects us from bacteria and disease. There has to be a cut in it of some sort, an open wound. But that doesn't stop our minds from fearing that the disease is much more contagious than it actually is. Clearly, we have so much more work to do with rejecting this narrative of fear. And it's precisely this narrative of fear that Greg Louganis is fighting. 
when he came out as an HIV positive gay man in 1995, there was some criticism, but there was mostly support. He did it, he shared his experience so that he could help others, so that he could pave the way for future people not to struggle with the issues that he did. He continues to be an AIDS activist and involved in American Olympic endeavors. Today he lives with his husband and many dogs. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today in LGBT History. If you learned something, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this almost every day. Come back tomorrow and we'll be looking at the surprising decriminalization of homosexuality in the Ottoman Empire.